Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Um, today we're going to be looking at another very interesting axe, just like last episode uh, with the spell steel. This one is also one of those crazy ones, which seems to be made for a very specific purpose, but um, can it live up to its specific purpose? Now with recent patch changes, this blade has actually seen a different light, um, whereas before it probably was relegated to a laughing stock. Um, recent path changes to Holy Bolt, allowing Holy Bolt to pierce and um, increasing the damage and reducing the synergies and all sorts of other interesting things has created an interesting conundrum with this particular weapon. Can you create a character out of the Bone Slayer Blade um, and actually use it to dish out tons of damage? Now, at level 42, level 20 Holy Bolt is actually pretty powerful. And uh, fully synergized, level 20 Holy Bolt actually does some pretty insane damage. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys uh, just how much damage level 20 Holy Bolt can do. Uh, so if we were to take um, our character down here and grab uh, level 20, Fist of the Heavens, which is the synergy for Holy Bolt, um, and then we were to put on the blade, um, it also happens to have 20 Holy Bolt charges, so we could pull up the level 20 Holy Bolt charges and look at the damage um, actually on the screen, so we don't have to calculate it this time. Um, so we are looking at 2,156 damage to 2,420 damage, magic damage, per Holy Bolt that spawns. On top of this, we also have the ability to beef up something like Prayer by 20 points. And if we do that, we are now looking at a massive 195 to 410 healing per Holy Bolt as well. Now the beautiful thing about Bone Slayer Gothic Blade, though, is that you don't have to actually cast the spell. So it's one of those really interesting things that, like, you just kind of use it, and and that's it. And one of my lights went out. I'm sure it will come back on at some point and blind the ever-living crap out of me. Um, so a build around this particular weapon could be interesting, and we're going to talk about that. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the weapon, both the ethereal and the non-ethereal versions, and we're going to talk about whether or not they actually could be useful or not, and, um, and what you could potentially do with them. Um, so first off, right off the bat, we have the Bone Slayer Gothic Blade non-ethereal version, which is 57 to 224 damage, 79 dex, 115 strength, and level 42. Now this is, of course, a um, an exceptional level item, and at level 42, it's actually not bad damage. Um, it does have a 50% chance to cast level 20 Holy Bolt, and um, that is when struck, however, so not on striking. And this is one of the downsides of this particular item, is that unlike the previous items, which I've gone over, like, for instance, the Principal Armor, which is the Archon Plate that has 100% chance to cast level 5 Holy Bolt on striking, or the Laying of Hands Bramble Mints, which also has a uh, level 3 Holy Bolt on striking, uh, we are looking at a weapon that specifically only has a wind struck effect, which means I have to get beat down. The other big negative about this is that it is a two-handed weapon, and to use it, I would have to forego using a shield, uh, which can be a big detriment, um, especially considering I'm already, you know, kind of like a raw sponge at this point because I've taken off a shield. I don't have access to the high defense of the Holy Shield skill, and on top of that, I'm in there wailing away with a two-handed weapon, uh, which is going to make things a little bit more complicated. Um, I, I would like to see them add some defense on this particular item to, to kind of like balance out the fact that it doesn't have any... Just no way you can survive with this particular weapon. Like, you need like massive defense bump from all your other equipment. Um... We also have a 20% increased attack speed on here, which is great because um, it's not particularly a fast weapon anyway. And then we have a 220% enhanced damage, which does vary by quite a bit. It's 180 to 220%, so we're talking about a uh, what is that, 40% variable. And then we have 35% bonus to attack rating, which is great. Uh, we definitely would need that attack rating if we're going to try and zeal with a two-handed weapon. And we want to make sure that we're landing our hits because uh, obviously we need to be doing something while we're waiting to get beat down. Um, we also have a 235% damage to Undead, which is off-weapon ED. And that is, of course, a scaling amount based on character level, and it does go as high as 247% at level 99. Uh, we also have a 470 attack rating based on character level to Undead, and that one also varies by character level up to 495. Uh, we also have plus 8 strength, which is just kind of extra off-weapon ED, I guess. And then the t level 20 Holy Bolt Charges, which are kind of a moot point unless you're a non-paladin. 
Um, I can't really see a lot of non-paladins actually using this, and there's a reason why. It's because level 20 Holy Bolt doesn't really do very much on non-paladins, unsynergized. Like, completely unsynergized Holy Bolt is, um, is kind of garbage tier uh, equipment or, or abilities. Uh, we're talking about, like, even at level 20, we're talking about 196 to 220 damage magic. And life healed 39, 39 to 82. So just like the barest minimum damage on a non-paladin character. So I can't really see a non-paladin character getting good use out of this item. Just simply because they don't have the synergies to make it work. Now the ethereal version um, has better damage at 86 to 336. Uh, 69 dexterity, 105 strength, and uh, level 42. Uh, we also have, of course, the fact that you could upgrade these, which we're going to explore real quick. So, um, the got a random faith bow sitting in here. I, I, I know exactly what, who that belongs to. <laughs> um, so, let's upgrade this with the pull, the lum, and the perfect emerald. So, we're going to go from the Bone Slayer Gothic Blade, 57 to 224, 79 dex, 115 strength, 42. <laughs> to the Bone Slayer Champion Axe, 188 to 300, 59 dex, 167 strength, and level 68. Um, as for upgrades go, I mean, it's halfway decent, I guess. It's not really that great for a two-handed weapon. Um, I feel like there's one-handed weapons which come close to this, uh, but the bottom end at 188 is pretty high, and um, it being a, a, a unique niche-based weapon, I suppose it's fine. Um, the ethereal version can also be upgraded with a Paul a Lum, and a Perfect Emerald. And uh, it will go from 86 to 336, 69 dexterity, 105 strength, level 42, to 281 to 451, 49 dex, 157 strength, and uh, level 68. Uh, much better upgrade, but of course the problem with the ethereal version is that you would have to put a Zodra in it, uh, which is going to bring the level requirement up to level 76. Now, this particular item is um, is definitely an interesting one to consider for a build on a Paladin. Now, uh, how exactly you would survive is probably the biggest issue. Um, it's not necessarily, can I output the damage? It's more so, how do I survive so that I don't die over and over again um, while putting out the damage? And uh, as a special treat for you guys, we're going to theorycraft this right now, um, what you would need to build your character to make it work, and uh, potentially, like, what you could do to mitigate some of the defense loss and blocking loss and things like that. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, we definitely still need to put 20 points into Fist of the Heavens. So this is a precursor to beef up the Holy Bolt. We have to have that to beef up the Holy Bolt. Um, we don't need Holy Shield or Smite or Charge. Well, maybe Charge. Uh, let's go ahead and grab Charge uh, because that could be useful for getting around. And then as for Auras, um, and, you know, there's a lot of different options for Auras, but we're stuck. Like, we need a defensive Aura. And I hate to say this because it really makes me feel like uh, an idiot for, like, even trying to choose something like Defiance. But... Um, if you look at our defense, let me go ahead and, and pop in some uh, some strength so that we can actually put on our equipment. Um, if you look at our defense right now, we have a defense of uh, 1,114, which, which in Hell difficulty is so ridiculously low that um, everything, I mean, and I mean everything, will um, be constantly and never-endingly just annihilating us. Um, and there's really not much we're going to be able to do about it. Now, I do have some pretty ridiculously broken charms here, which we're going to we're gonna pull in to try and help save our lives. Um, all resistance charms uh, with 20 life, things like that. Um, you know, let's, let's just stack them in as many as we've got. Uh, because this the the main issue with this build is not going to be can you dish out the damage. The main issue with this build is going to be can you survive. Um, and and I think this is the biggest issue with using Where this particular weapon you? is you've got to figure out a way that you can survive. Um, so one thing I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to build up my vitality like extremely high. 
uh, my dexterity is going to have to get relatively ign ignored. Um, and the reason why I'm going to have to ignore my dexterity is because, well, number one, I'm not building a shield, so I don't have to do block chance. Um, number two, um, the attack rating really can't be a big issue. I've got to figure out a way around the attack rating, whether it's um, beefing up my blessed aim as high as possible, uh, beefing up my zeal as high as possible, which I'm probably going to be running zeal, um, and uh, you know may maybe even beefing up. Uh, not even really sure. Um, we could, of course, use fanaticism, which I think would be the best aura for us. Or we could, as we have right now, uh, we have fanaticism on our merc. So, I mean, maybe we'll just go with that for the time being. And we'll try and use something else on our character. Um, something that will increase our survivability a bit, perhaps. Um, hmm. Thinking, thinking, thinking. All right, well, first things first, let's go ahead and dump points into Zeal, get that attack rating up as high as possible, um, and then let's also uh, dump some points into Blessed Aim, because B Blessed Aim has a passive attack rating increase bonus, uh, which hopefully, uh, between the two of them, should bring my attack rating up to a uh, agreeable level. And I am nowhere near an agreeable level. I'm at 3,979 for an endgame character, which is just absolutely pathetic. I mean, granted, I do have the 470 attack rating bonus versus Undead, um, which, you know, could come in handy, I suppose. Um, the helmet on this character is kind of a the wrong one. Do I have something else sitting in my stash for helmets? I do not. Let me see if I can grab a helmet from somebody that might help me out. I'm also using a razor tail, I just noticed, uh, which is also not going to help me out. I do have gore riders on, which could be useful. I mean, I have a little bit of wiggle room here with the belt and the helmet, so let me uh, pause the video real quick. I'm going to go see if I can find something to replace those. Alright, so uh, a little bit of thought into the items that I was going to use for his helmet and boot sl I mean, belt slot. Um, a Berber Crown of the Ages for 31% damage reduction. And a Verdungo's Hardy Coil, um, both of which will come in extremely handy to get my damage reduction up high enough. So that, uh, so that I'm approaching that very nice um, threshold where I'm not getting my butt kicked by everything. Um, resistances are also important, but my resistances are halfway decent. And we also are going to need a pretty healthy amount of life to survive whatever hell I'm going to put myself through. Um, the main issue, though, is that um, I'm really kind of looking at extremely low attack rating. And I do know that Dexterity gives attack rating, so I'm kind of interested to see like how high I could potentially get my attack rating to make this character a little less missing on his targets. Now, granted, I, I do have to count in the fact that I have that pretty nice bonus to attack rating to Undead, but let's, uh, let's see exactly how much we can bring this up. All right, so first let's figure out how much plus attack rating we have in total. Um, so we are currently running a 310% from Zeal, so 310 plus. Uh, we also have the passive bonus from Blessed Aim, which is a 100% bonus, so 100 plus. Um, on the weapon itself, we have a 35% bonus to attack rating, so 35%. Um, which is going to give us a total of about 560%, 500, 555%, let's say, give or take. I'm not really sure um, if there's any other factors riding in here. Uh, but we should be all right. We don't have any lifesteal, though. I'm noticing this right now. Maybe we should switch to String of Ears over um, Verdungos, just simply so I have... Uh, a little bit of extra lifesteal on this build. Let me go swap that out real quick. Alright, so swapping to String of Ears will give us um, a nice little 8% lifesteal, uh, which is going to be clutch for what we're trying to build. We definitely need lifesteal. Um, although I do like Verdungo's for the extra life that it gives, along with the replenishment of life, I just don't really feel like um, going without lifesteal on a build like this is very wise. I mean, uh, in the future, you could probably use something like a dual leech ring um, to accommodate this. 
and maybe if you have the dual re really nice dual leech ring you could possibly work out that that build um, the rest of this build uh, for attack rating uh, let's just see how much we can get so it's five attack rating per dex point okay so if we were to put in 100 dex which isn't too bad um, it would be 500 plus 550 percent um, so we'd be looking at a total of 3,275 extra attack rating, uh, which is not really going to be enough. We need to hit like 10k, so uh, that's going to bring us up nicely to around like 6. So we're probably going to have to put about 200 points into decks, which may seem like a lot. But if we don't, we're not going to be able to hit anything, which is probably going to be just absolutely sad. Um, let's just go ahead and start putting points into decks. And uh, let's see how high we go. Um, so we got 82, 83, 84% chance to hit a pit lord. Hey, look, 7, 7, 7, 7, zeal. Now, um, the interesting thing about this is that we do have the 470 attack rating on here as well, so that's going to get bumped up also. Let's get our HP to a good level before we figure out whether or not we want to uh, dump any more points into decks. So 1,500 HP is actually pretty good. That's actually decent. Now granted, we do have all these plus HP dojanks here, which is kind of messing up the calculations. But this build is something that you're going to do for fun. It's not something that you're going to do as a practical thing. This is going to be something that you... You spend a little bit of time and you have fun, like, trying to make this work. Um, and that's really all there is to it. If you're, you're just trying to make this crazy-ass build work. Um, you know, even down to the ethereal zotted Bone Slayer Blade. Um, utilizing something like the Principal Armor. Um, even the Dual Bird count Crown of Ages. All of this is, of course, going to be extremely expensive. Um, I'm in no way, shape, or form am I ever going to tell you this is a budget build. Uh... Hello, guys and gals. Uh, today I have for you a budget Bone Slayer build. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so let's see here. Let's go over everything uh, real quick. And uh, let's look at the last little bits of our, our build here. Um, so we have our strength in. We have our dex in. We've got our vitality. Um, we have our maxed out blessed aim so that we have as much attack rating as possible. Um, we haven't really figured out what aura we're going to be using. Uh, it's probably not going to be Blessed Aim, by the way. Um, we have our maxed out Fist of the Heavens, so that we have our maximum 1,000% synergy bonus for Holy Bolts. Uh, we maxed out Zeal, and uh, you know what? We might as well max out uh, Sacrifice to max out the damage bonus for Zeal. Um, that way we can get a very nice damage bonus out of Zeal. It's a good idea. So now we're running um, the highest level Zeal that we can with some pretty halfway decent... Zeal damage at 2,010 to 3,269. And, of course, we also have the fanaticism from the Faith Bow Girl, um, which is going to help us out a ton. Um, it's going to give us more attack rating, obviously, um, when she's nearby, which we definitely want her to be nearby. Um, so now we're up to 9,346 attack rating uh, when attacking demons or regular monsters. And we've got a pretty nice bump to that, uh, a 470 attack rating when we're attacking undead, which is where we're going to test this out. Um, so, very, very interesting little build here. We also have the Principal Armor, which is going to be spamming level 5 Holy Bolts, and the Laying of Hands, which is going to be spamming level 3 Holy Bolts, with the Bone Slayer Blade spamming level 20 Holy Bolts. So, we have three different Holy Bolt spams coming from three different pieces of equipment, um, and they will all overlap. I've tested this. Um, I have looked it up online. I have done my, done my research, and yes... Holy Bolts do stack, and they can fire at the same time, and they can also not only fire at the same time, they can all hit the same target because Holy Bolt does not have a hit delay. Um, when you, if, you, if you look up uh, Amazon Basin hit delay, you will find that Holy Bolt is not listed as one of the skills that has a hit delay, so you can hit multiple times on the same target. Um, all in all, this build is just super stupid expensive, and um, <clears throat> I still can't figure out what aura I want to use. In this theory craft. Um, the only thing I can think of in my mind that would actually even be a plausible answer is Defiance. 
Um, because I'm such a weak character with only 1,478 defense, I'm just going to die on a regular basis. Um, and having maxed out Defiance might be my only way to survive, um, considering that I cannot use Holy Shield. Um, and, um, I mean, Fanaticism is on my bow girl, so I don't really necessarily have to worry about that. Um, it would be nice, of course, to have maxed out Fanaticism, um, natively, but this isn't a regular build. And if I did go with Fanaticism native, the issue with that is that I would be, of course, ruining any kind of defensive possibility. Another option could potentially be Thorns, which I was thinking, because obviously I'm an Onstruck character, so having another Onstruck ability could be interesting, just simply from the aspect of, you know, like, hey, uh, I'm already shooting out all these Holy Bolts, here's another way I could dish out damage, um, you know, when I'm getting beat up by monsters. Um, but I did my testing with Thorns, and it just really didn't pro provide enough damage um, if you're a Necromancer who can cast Amplify Damage on a regular basis, Thorns actually seems like it does halfway good. But, like, it doesn't really do very well by itself on a Paladin. So, I think, uh, I think I am going to be doing Defiance. Uh, it's probably the first time you've ever seen anybody actually natively use Defiance. Um, which brings our defense up to a measly 5,764, which isn't even really that great. But it's going to be a hell of a lot better than, <laughs> than it otherwise would be. Now, to get full benefit with this particular build, we're going to go into the River of Flame. And the reason why we're going to go to River of Flame is because all the monsters here are either undead or demons. And the holy bolts that we're going to be shooting out like madmen are also, of course, um, you know undead or demon orientated so uh, river of flame and uh, chaos sanctuary are just the best places to test this build and uh, i'm pretty sure this is set to players eight i will double check this after i kill this group of monsters Uh, let me just double check the player count for you guys. Zoom it down. Yes, yeah, so we are on players 8, so do keep that in mind as we look at this build and the speed at which we were able to clear. Now, right now, I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, this is actually kind of cool. But... Keep in mind that most of the Holy Bolts that you're seeing are not coming from monsters hitting me. They're coming from me hitting the monsters. Now, if I were to just stand here, I'd probably end up dying. But if I were to just stand here, you'll notice that I don't really have a huge number of Holy Bolts coming out from the level 20 versions. They do come out, of course. But they're nowhere near as frequent as the, the ones from the principal armor, the ones from the laying of hands, and so forth and so on. And the reason for this is that, like, as a character, like, you don't necessarily, like, want to get beat up on a regular basis. The defense, of course, does prevent the Bone Slayer Blade from going off, but it also prevents you from dying. Um, but when we get into the Chaos Sanctuary, I think you'll see that it's going to go off a lot more. And this is due to the fact that um, chance to cast abilities don't just go off when they when you're hit with a melee or a ranged attack, they also go off when you're hit by spells. Now, I don't know exactly why spells will trigger the um, chance to cast abilities, but they do. And um, it's rather interesting to watch because as a person who has utilized several chance to cast when struck items, um, I have noticed that there is a huge variety of items in the game. Um, or, sorry, spells in the game that will trigger the chance to cast abilities. Um, most notably is things like lightning, um, like frost attacks. Um, I've even seen things like fire attacks cause the... Uh, why is she just stuck there? Uh, but cause the, uh, the effects to go off. And um, the more you play around with chance to cast when struck, the more you'll realize that there is just like a just sea of items that can relatively um, chance, you know, proc the ability. Now, for a curse like Medusa's Gaze, which is a much more interesting one in general, um, you will find that it doesn't really matter how often it goes off as long as it does, in fact, go off. 
and, because it's a curse and it lasts for a particularly long period of time. So it's not like you have to, to really worry too much about, you know, like a, it going off on a repeated basis. However, something like Holy Vault, you kind of need to go off on a repeated basis. Because if it doesn't go off on a repeated basis, well then how are you dishing out your damage? Um, so, you know, 50% it, 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 chance to cast should be going off basically all the time. And uh, that's why I want to get into Chaos Sanctuary here, and we're going to do a quick test on the, uh, the monsters that are more... Um, what's the term... Uh, spammy with their ranged abilities. Spammy. I think that's the term I'm looking for. Spammy. Now, another thing I could do is um, grab a Actumerc that has Defiance. Um, it could be an interesting choice over using a Fanaticism Merc. And I was also considering some other options. So, like, um, instead of going with a defensive ability, I could go pure offense. And uh, I could run something like Holy Fire or Holy Shock natively. Um, I am attacking very fast, and I'm hitting lots of monsters at one time. I could also do Sanctuary, which could be an interesting choice. Um, I'm actually kind of interested in how that would work out. Hmm. I mean, Sanctuary is a pretty massive bump in damage to Undead. And uh, and it also would sort of kind of keep me... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It would sort of kind of keep me, um, you know, out of harm's way, so to speak. Because I would be essentially, like, uh, knocking all the monsters away from me. Although it might cause a lot of issues, like, with my zeal. Like, not being able to hit the targets as well. I'm not sure. I mean, as far as Players 8 go, I'm I'm really kind of just, like, burning through this. Um, for the most part, it really doesn't seem too difficult. I haven't really felt like I've been in danger at any point. Um, the Defiance Aura, I think, is doing its job to keep me alive. Um, my attack rating seems pretty decent with the Fanaticism Aura, and um, the Holy Volts from the Principle and the Laying of Hands are certainly dishing out a pretty nice amount of damage. It does seem like the Holy Bolts from the armor, when they go off, are dealing a pretty sexy amount of damage. I mean, I can pretty much just use the charge on the weapon and show you how much the Holy Bolts on the weapon are dealing uh, without having to rely on the chance to cast. So well, let's, let's take a look at that real quick. Let me just kill most of these monsters. Of course, there's a little bit of strategy involved in trying to make sure that the Holy Bolts are shooting off like in a way that they hit multiple targets. And uh, I've played around with this on my God Zealer a lot. So like, you can't just stand in there and just hold the shift key and, and just zeal away. Like, You really kind of want to like position yourself so that you're hitting you know, more specifically. Now, of course, this build also has the Fist of the Heavens, which is very interesting. So not only do you have your, your Holy Bolt, your Zeal, your, your all your other stuff, you can, of course, cast the Fist of the Heavens as well. Um, the Holy Bolt damage on it won't be that great, though, because you don't have it fully beefed up, but it's still going to do 683 to 694 Holy Bolt damage um, per cast. And you could basically just cast it whenever you wanted for some free Holy Bolt damage. All right, so let's take a look real quick at what our level 20 Holy Bolt does. Um... So let me go ahead and grab my level 20 Holy Bolt, and we'll target this Maw Fiend right here. Um, so as you can see, when I do hit him... Oh, here we go. That's a pretty nice little healthy chunk of damage that the level 20 Holy Bolt takes away in Player's A. But it's not, like, super amazing. I mean, 2,156 to 2,420 is a decent amount. As you can see here, though, like, a large percentage of our damage is coming from either A, the Holy Bolts, B, the physical damage from the actual zeal, um, or, you know, other sources. Like, uh, for instance, we've got 
pretty nice amount of demon damage on the gloves. We've got pretty nice amount of undead damage on the weapon. Um, like, say, in total, we're running, we got Deadly Strike, we've got the demon damage, we've got the undead damage, we've got the holy bolt shooting out. There's a lot going on with this build. That's a lot. Um, I'd like to change the defiance just, just to see. I'm going to be a raw sponge, don't get me wrong, and I know I'm going to be a raw sponge. But I was thinking... Um, there's two ways that I could potentially do this that might work out to my, my advantage. Number one is use Holy Freeze, uh, which would act as a defensive ability too, but also an offensive ability at the same time. So essentially giving me a very nice ability to, you know, like, freeze all my targets. They're still going to hit me, but they're not going to hit me as quickly, which could buy me the time I need to dish out the damage. Um, or I could go with something like Holy Shock or Holy Fire, um, so that I'm applying an elemental damage as I attack. Um, and then alternatively, I could also do Thorns, which would be another way to um, to add additional damage to the build. Uh, let me go ahead and re this real quick, and let me see how it runs with Holy Freeze, just as a, just as a, 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 for, a, a let's see. Let's see, that's basically what it is, a let's see. All right, so there we go. We got our disc. Good. Put our HP back in. So we're at fifteen hundred HP. You know, uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's do fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred, I think, is uh, a good number. And then let's go ahead and dump the rest of our points into decks so we can actually hit some stuff. Um, let's go ahead and grab our fist of the heavens. One point in charge. All right, so um, this one is a little bit weird, and uh, make sure we got our zeal. Um, let's forego the sacrifice because the physical damage isn't going to be as important at this particular point because we're going to go with the elemental damage. Let's go down to the holy freeze and beef that up to maximum. Now the problem with going with holy freeze is that you're kind of negating the whole. 50% or wind struck for the melee monsters. But hear me out, okay? Um, the melee monsters weren't hitting me very much with the defiance anyway because the defiance was beefing up my defense. So this gives me a way to number one, survive within melee combat. And number two, it does not affect casters. So any casting spell, any monster that's casting spells on me is still going to hit me with those spells. Um, and it's not going to affect the speed of their spells at all, so I'm still going to be casting tons of Holy Bolts when any caster strikes me, which should still be useful. Um, let's go ahead and beef up the Synergy for Holy Freeze, which is, of course, uh, Resist Cold. And uh, I'm trying to see here. Uh, there we go. 20 points under Resist Cold. Let's go ahead and dump uh, everything else that we've got into into salvation. All right, so that gives us a pretty healthy amount of um, of cold damage, essentially, with our build. And as you can see, we're taking a heck of a lot more damage. We're also amped, which is an issue. Probably gonna end up dying here. Let's see if I can back out a little bit. Spectral hit, lightning enchanted, cursed. A little, a little bit of a tough monster. I'm not gonna lie. Spectral hit, lightning enchanted, cursed is kind of nasty. I mean, not only did he curse me to take extra damage, he also was dishing out a large amount of elemental damage, and I was surrounded by Urdars, which do a pretty healthy amount of physical damage um, in combination with the curse. I'm not going to say that that was terrible. Now, for a two-handed paladin build, I feel like I'm actually doing pretty good. Um, even with the curse, um, I, my physical damage reduction seems to be doing its job and uh, helping protect me from most of the curse. Um, I'm probably still running a pretty healthy negative amount of uh, physical damage reduction, but um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so I'm currently at negative 54, so I am canceling out a pretty large portion of the uh, of the amplified damage 
with my physical damage reduction, which is certainly very nice. Um, I mean, the Holy Freeze is definitely interesting. Um, it does provide me with the defensive nature that I need to survive as the Paladin. I think without the Holy Freeze right now, I would have died. I definitely would have died already, like, several times. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's an interesting uh, little, little weird build here. Um, let's run this really quickly in Players 1, just because I want to see. Players 8 is, is nasty, okay? Players 8 has always been nasty, and I just want to run it in Players 1 just to see what the difference is between Players 8 and Players 1. Um, a build working in Players 8 is not the end-all, be-all, like, of a build, but it's interesting to see how the build performs in Players 8. If I was with seven other people, that is an acceptable level of play. Um, I can kill monsters relatively quickly, I can fight on my own, I can survive on my own, um, and it's not that big of a deal. Um, but now we're going to try Players 1, and we're going to see how this character rolls in Players 1. Um, as you can see, he has basically no issues in Players 1. Like, his his Holy Bolt damage, along with his physical damage and his elemental damage, is just absolutely demolishing everything. Um, as far as a build goes, in Players 1, Players 2, Players 3, he's probably just, like, a god among men. The additional, like, little Holy Bolts that are shooting out on a regular basis from this character with the bone, from the Bone Slayer Blade are going to be doing a pretty healthy amount of damage to most of these targets, but the weird thing is, though, is I'm not really entirely sure if this character would be doing poorly without it. Like, the Bone Slayer Blade, what is it really adding? I mean, yes, you've got a pretty decent amount of physical two-handed damage, and yes, it gives you a pretty nice little bonus damage to attack rating, and attack rating to undead, but the only real, like, reason why you're utilizing this at all is that level 20 Holy Bolt proc. And you could theoretically be getting a level 20 Holy Bolt proc from... I mean, you could just be using Holy Bolt. I mean, I even right now I have level 14 Holy Bolt on my character. And, uh, and while it's not the most amazing thing in the world, you can see that the level 14 Holy Bolt actually does some pretty significant damage to targets and players want. Um, so when those level 20 Holy Bolts do go off, I mean, it's pretty significant little little damage bumps. Uh, but I am such a raw sponge of a character without pretty much any defense to my name. And it, it's complicated by the fact that the principal armor, which is one of the main ways that this build works, has no enhanced defense on it. So I'm basically stuck with, it, like, you know, 60, 600 defense, even if I got, like, a plus 15% enhanced defense armor. Like, Principal's very low armor value is is, is very sad. Um, the other issue here is that I do see, like, a kind of a big attack rating issue with this particular build. Um, although 8,474 8, may be enough specifically for, like, a... Um, I want to call like just a regular, like, PvE paladin who doesn't really do a lot of endgame content. I kind of see it as an issue for anybody who might want to, like, go do, like some more end game content like ubers or or even just killing something like diablo may be a little bit of an issue diablo or bale because the attack rating issues between that might be a little bit difficult to uh to overcome um i'm also chugging a lot of potions i'm noticing just a lot of potions in general uh just simply because well it's you know i'm i'm a i have very low defense 1483 is, is almost nothing and um I mean, physically, or, or you know what, build-wise, this is very similar to a, like, a Berserk Barbarian. Like, I'm dishing out a pretty massive amount of damage, I can hit pretty fast, but at the same time, I'm just this raw sponge of a character that doesn't really have much, you know, like, ways of mitigating damage. And if it wasn't for the fact that I was utilizing the String of Ears and the Crown of Ages to provide a huge amount of negation, you know, physical damage negation... I would have died so many times, uh, especially when I got cursed and I was almost dead during that one time. That almost dead would have been very dead, about like six or seven times. Like even if I like magically healed myself back to full with like full juvies over and over again, 
I guarantee you, one of those hits probably would have one-shot me. Uh, just because the character just, it, it, like, he can't dodge a, an attack to save his life. He's got no block. He's got no defense. He's got no, um, you know, like, increased defense from Holy Shield. He's got no faster blocking. Um, and you kind of have to build the character around this, and that's why I kind of chose Holy Freeze, because I'm like, okay, well, if he can't defend himself, at least maybe he can cause the monster to not wail on him so hard or so fast, buying him a little bit of time, which could potentially um, help him, you know, dish out the damage in the meantime. And, um, and, it, and it seems to work. Having that additional Holy Freeze um, reduction does seem to provide him with an extra element of protection that allows him to, uh, you know, to get in there and, and not die while still essentially being a raw sponge that, you know, spams things. Um, I'm just not wholly impressed with the Bone Slayer Blades effect. I really wish that they would change it to on striking. If it was level 20 Holy Bolt on striking, I bet you money that people would actually use this thing on a character like a God Zealer, and they would have a blast with it. Because you're talking about level 20 Holy Bolt, which is 2,156 to 2,420 damage, and could potentially, like, if you were a, a max, you know, breakpoint zealer, you could potentially be spamming out, like, five of those within one zeal rotation, which is, like, nothing. And uh, and you would just be absolutely demolishing content with it. Um, at a 50% chance, it's going to go off often enough, even in combination with the principal armor and the laying of hands, you could be dishing out more damage probably than a Hammerton can do within the same time span. And your Holy Bolts will pierce and hit multiple targets, which means that you could potentially be doing, I don't know, maybe even more damage than even the highest level Paladins or, or characters in the game. Um, especially if you are a savvy and intelligent Paladin who lines up his targets. Like, for instance, right here... Um, I'm hitting, what, a couple different targets at a time? But you gotta make sure that I'm uh, changing my angle a little bit, so I'm hitting more than one target. These Holy Bolts are dishing out a lot more damage. Now, the Bone Slayer Blades, when struck, is a little bit more difficult to target, and that also could be an issue here, is that basically what we're looking at is we're looking at a... an, an, an effect that goes off in the direction that the monster hits you. So it doesn't necessarily matter where you want Bone Slayer to go off. Unlike with Principal and with Laying of Hands, you can kind of choose the direction. But when it comes to Bone Slayer Blade, it's only going to ever go off in the direction of the monster that hits you. Um, and that's that's basically it. I think we've covered just about everything we can on this, and I thought it would be cool to turn this into a little theory craft for the Bone Slayer Blade to make it more of an interesting episode. And I, I know it did end up at 43 minutes, well, that's fine. Uh, I'm sure you guys had a little bit of fun following along with me uh, with this crazy weapon. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. And um, if you want to keep watching my videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the like button. And uh, ciao.